The Method of Developing Bhavana by Ajahn Doon One begins with the body posture that is comfortable, whether standing, walking, sitting or lying down. Whatever is convenient. One should then make oneself fully aware with just bare awareness. Not trying to be aware of something just knowing itself alone. One then keeps the chitta, the mind, there continuously. just in bare awareness. There is no need to be discursive or analytical. Don't force it, but also don't let the chitta be free to follow events. After a while, the chitter will go out, following sense objects, before one can catch it. This is normal for a beginner. And when the chitter is satisfied with that sense object, one will then again become aware of oneself. When one becomes aware, one should investigate by comparing one's state in still awareness and one's state when the chitta is following sense objects. What is the difference? This is a method to make the chitta notice and remember.
After this, carefully and gently, keep the chitta in a state of still awareness as before. When one is not mindful, not being careful enough, the chitta will again go out to seek some sense object and remain until it is satisfied. And then one will again become aware. When one is again aware, reinvestigate and then gently keep the chitta in the state of still awareness as before. By this method, it will not be very long before one is able to control the chitta and finally attain samadhi. One will then be clever in the ways of the chitta without having to learn it from another.
Do not meditate when the chitta is in a state of emotional turmoil. This would be of no use and may even cancel out one's former efforts, resulting in one losing the desire to practice further. When one is unable to practice in the way just outlined, one should try thinking Buddha or any other word as long as it isn't a source of disturbance or aversion. One just continues to think this word and then tries to notice where the word is clearest and that will be the base of the chitta. One should notice that this base does not remain stationary at all times, one day being one place and another day somewhere else. The base of the chitta, becoming clear with buddho, will never be external, but always internal within the body. When we investigate this, however, we will not be able to pinpoint the exact place within the body making it hard to say whether it is external or internal. When this happens, this means one has arrived at the correct base of the citta. When one has correct attention and buddho is clear in the mind's eye, one tries to continue on without break. Because if there is a break, the chitta will go out to a sense object again. When it is satisfied with the sense object, one will then again regain awareness and continue, buddho, as before, according to the same method 
as just mentioned. Slowly one will finally be able to control the chitta by oneself. Remember that in being aware of or fixing the chitta, one must have in mind the aim of developing the chitta to the desired state. This aim is virtue, sila. Reciting Buddha alone, without this purpose of virtue, will be of no use at all and will negate our efforts, making meditation difficult in the future. If one's purpose is firm, however, one's development of the citta will, without doubt, bear fruit every time to varying degrees but always to the satisfaction of the practitioner. In using Buddha, clear, fixed thought and consistency must be coupled with diligent effort. I have compared firm and consistent purpose to a man watching the sword blade of an enemy ready to strike. The man watches the sword blade thinking, whatever way it comes at me, I must counter it to be safe. This determination must be firm in order for samadhi to arise. If it is not, then don't waste your time and ruin your faith. In the mental recitation method for one-pointedness of the citta, notice who is reciting Buddha. When the chitta slowly, step by step, goes into calm, the chitta's habit of going out to the senses and their objects 
will slowly lessen until one will be aware as soon as it occurs. When one gets to this stage, the word Buddha, mentally recited, will disappear on its own because the recitation word is a gross object. And when the chitta goes beyond this gross object stage, it will abandon it. When the preparatory word has disappeared, one need not recall it. Just keep the chitta at the base constantly and notice the feelings and tendencies of the chitta in that base. One should look at the chitta when it is calm. Let mindfulness watch the base. And when any sense object arises, let the object go and continue watching the chitta. One should not worry or force, but just try to keep and attend to the chitta at its base, having mindfulness there to quietly be aware of things. One should not speculate about the chitta as to what is happening or what arises. Just be aware. Letting this go on continuously, one will begin to understand the ways of the chitta. Does the chitta create the defilements? Or do the defilements create chitta? Understand the objects of thought and notice the three types, which are greed, hate and delusion.
Don't send the chitta outside. Be aware of the one object, the chitta, and don't let it go outside to objects. When the chitta does go out, mindfully return it to its base and awareness. One should try to maintain clear comprehension, some pajanya, always. With the exception of normal vision, one should pay no attention to mental images or nimittas. While the chitta is not thinking about external things, notice the activities of the chitta in following the six senses. One must attain knowledge, jnana, in order to see the chitta, just as the eye sees form. When one has watched the behaviour of the chitta for some time, and when one understands the condition and causes of the various thoughts, the chitta will then be as fast as these thoughts, and they will steadily be abandoned until the chitta is free of these objects. the chitta will then be free and separate from the body-based feelings, remaining at its original base. Seeing this way is seeing with the eyes of wisdom. No matter how much one thinks, 
one will not know directly. But when we stop thinking, we will know. But to do this, we must use thought. Separate copied form, vijnana, with knowledge, vijja, by way of the citta. When one is able to understand that the chitta and body are separate, one then continues to watch the chitta to see if there is anything remaining in its base or not. One should use mindfulness to watch the chitta, keeping the chitta calm continuously until one understands the activities of the chitta intricately, level by level. One must understand about causes and results and that these, in fact, come from the thoughts that originate in the citta, compounding, adding to, creating and being born without end. These are the illusions that deceive people. The chitta will rid itself of these things continuously until they are gone. This means developing the chitta to the point where one can ignore the smallest atom of consciousness in the chitta. One must abandon both causes and results. When one has developed the chitta to the point where it is free of thoughts and compounding or empty, one no longer depends on cause and results. The chitta will then be free and above states based on thought, being free of all adulteration and called pure dharma of freedom.
all debts are then paid, and one would be beyond the cause of birth. When one abandons the smallest atom of attachment, the gross karma that was fixed, recorded, or imprinted in that atomic rupa, will not have a chance at fruition in the future. The debts are no longer increased when the chitta is contacted by internal or external conditions. It is just contact with no continuing resultant. One has escaped the gross karma in the former being and has paid all debts with no further affairs, responsibilities or ties to cause rebirth in order to repay karma. Because one's debts are paid, and there are no further attachments, the gross karma that caused one to go on to rebirth cannot again bear fruit. And this is called going beyond the cause of birth. One who knows, who is enlightened, does not say what that knowledge is. When all Dharma has been transmitted, then how can that which is called Dharma be Dharma? That which is said to have no dharma, that's it. That is the dharma complete. The one who knows is real, but the known is not. When the chitta is empty of various activities, it will attain true emptiness with nothing further to notice. One will then know in truth that the chitta has no form. It is one with emptiness. This means that it has no boundaries or limits. It is part of all things. And the chitta and the one who knows is one and the same. When the chitta and the one who knows 
are one in emptiness, then there is nothing to give or knowledge to impart. There is no thing to know the state of anything. There is no state to know a thing. When one knows the original state of the chitta, then chitta clearly sees chitta. The chitta will then be above all states of conventional labelling, beyond all having and being, beyond all words and past talking about it. It is pure nature and light coalesced in emptiness, unadulterated and the brightness of the original universe. It is called Nibbana. Nibbana.